On the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, our second guest of the day and a man who recently passed a massive milestone in the win category, Gordon Eakin of BYU Softball. Coach, great to have you with us. How are you today? I'm great, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You bet. Uh, for the record, you put up with a lot, including talking with me at the top of every fourth inning of every home game. And for those that didn't see it this last weekend, you're on the headset while Baylor hits a home run. I just want to commend you for not throwing the headset. That took some serious self-control. Well, you know, actually, I, I think I should spend seven innings on the headset because it's actually one of the only things during the game that calms me down a little bit. <laughs> Coach, you, you may not want to offer that up because they may take you up on that. Yeah, well, I, I'm just kind of kidding about that. I can't really do that. But but it does just give me a little bit of break in the in the stress and the focus because I'm so competitive that I live and relive every pitch. So that home run when I was on camera, while it was painful, I at least had a distraction. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're here for you. That's uh, That's what we do. Uh, looking back at the weekend, you passed 700 career wins, which is just a remarkable achievement. 15 straight NCAA tournaments, 11 straight conference championships, so many accolades. What did it mean to you to hit win number 700? Well, obviously, um, it's better than hitting 700 losses, but <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't even know on Saturday, you, you were the first one to mention that to me on the headset. And I really had no idea. And, uh, because I don't, I don't really track that as most coaches probably don't, but every one of those victories were hard fought and, and memorable. And I relish every single one of them. And the truly the credit goes to the terrific players, coaches and staff that we've had and the, great support by the athletic department to put us in a position to win those games. Did, did you even get celebrate anything with the 700? I mean, even after you found out, like, I don't know, is there get a cake with 700 candles on it? I don't know. I don't even know how you celebrate 700. Did you even do anything? <laughs> uh, no, you know, we, uh, you mentioned I might get an ice bath and mm -hmm. I thought, I think I told you on air that day that, um, this isn't a championship, so I don't, I doubt that's going to happen, but you, someone told someone cause the players actually did Gatorade <laughs> after the game. Uh, and of course I, I did have a lot of, uh, fans and alumni and administration reach out to me and, and, uh, congratulate me. But again, I want to give all the credit to those terrific players that we've had in our program and the coaches and the staff and the athletic department that's that's really where the credit belongs and the program just wins so much and so consistently and what a way to get 700 and 701 for that matter by sweeping a really solid talented baylor team that has some top pitching in the big 12 conference they're ranked 25th did it did it mean a little bit more to to hit that milestone marker by beating the ranked team and and picking up your biggest victories of the season you know, I think it did. I think it did make it a little bit sweeter on Saturday or Friday, whatever day that was. I, Baylor, I, I've been good friends with their coach for, for years and years and really respect their program and they are good and they do have one of the best pitching staffs in the country this year. So yeah, it did. It made it a little bit sweeter for sure. What type of impact do you hope it makes or that the, the players can take from that series moving forward? What type of impact do you want it to have? Well, obviously, we want to uh, build on that and understand that we are capable of playing that kind of ball all the time. I mean, we started clicking on all cylinders this weekend. We know it's there. We know we can do it, but it, we've just been a little hit and miss through the first part of the year, but but having said that, we've had a very very difficult schedule playing at away at the locations of some very very good teams, and so we knew it was there. Just wondered when it would start clicking, and it started clicking over the weekend. And I hope we can uh, build some consistency on that and continue to play that way most of the time. BYU softball head coach Gordon Eakin with us on BYU Sports Nation. You, you mentioned you work a lot. You're back to work tonight against Utah State. And then you head to Moraga to open up West Coast Conference play against St. Mary's, who I'm sure would love to take down the main target in the WCC. 
Uh, what are you hoping to see tonight as you prepare for conference play? Obviously, um, solid pitching, uh, effective and solid offense with quality at bats each time, solid defense, um, no mental mistakes, just the way we played on uh, Thursday and Friday, and then the perseverance that we played with on Thursday and Friday, because in all sports, including softball, uh, you have your ups and downs, your highs and lows, and you have to be able to, to persevere and sustain through those. So that's kind of what I'm going to be looking for and no letdowns. You know, everyone watching this program and you guys probably watched the national championship game last night. And I was talking to my wife prior to that game and, we were both wondering if Gonzaga would would have an emotional letdown at all coming off that victory with UCLA. And that is a real tangible thing in sports. And, and I think they did start out the game yesterday when Baylor buried them because they weren't, they were flat. And I wonder how much that had to do with that game with UCLA and how emotionally draining that was. And so I'm, I'm going to be looking tonight to make sure that that doesn't happen to us as we come off a strong Baylor series and play Utah State. No, no emotional letdowns that we just pick it up and keep going. Were you the one that implemented the home run chain, by the way? Is that, is that your type of bling? Do you get to wear the home run chain? Yeah, they're just borrowing that from me for sure. <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. There's no, always I, I, there's always some antic, right? I don't know where that came from. Okay. So we I've got I've got to do some oh, investigative work here. I'm gonna find out. Yeah, gonna, the, players would, the players would be able to tell you where that came from because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you deserve the home run chain. In fact, I remember not too long ago you taking some batting practice from some of your pitchers and uh, very promptly hitting a home run out of the park and jogging around the bases. Um, is that something that happens often? Is this a, is this a season tradition? Uh, no, not every season, but but every now and then I have to prove to them that I know what I'm talking about a little bit when I give them some counsel about their swing. And I think when they can see that maybe I can do it a little bit, uh, it, my words have a little bit more power to them. And I did that last year when we were in Fresno, and I'm still paying the price with a sore back. So I have to space <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, if they doubt you, all you need to do is say 700, okay? <laughs> there's, there's no reason yeah. to be doubting this guy here, all right? Oh, coach. I think, in today's, uh, I think in today's generation, it's more effective if I just put up the replay of that home run in Fresno than talk about the 700. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a lot of truth in that, video evidence. Coach, congratulations again on passing a milestone. We look forward to uh, you pursuing win number 702 tonight uh, against Utah State. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks for having me. You got it. Gordon Eakin on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.